post post World War II um, artists actually found for the first time that they were actually able to leave Australia and go and live and work overseas um, in Europe and in America and this this opened up a whole new way of seeing things um, and seeing artists works um, that they'd only seen in books or reproductions for instance in Sunday and John Reed's library um, they actually got to see them firsthand and they also got to exhibit their work and they found that when they went overseas there there is a there was a distinctive Australian style that was emerging um, a lot of these artists never they all dabbled in different for instance Albert Tucker would dabble in cubism or surrealism but they never really adhered to one particular style and that was because Australia had a distance. So Australia, even though we were being influenced by what was happening overseas, at the same time we were developing our own style and once we went over to Europe and America, um, the public and people started embracing um, these styles and what we were doing. The, a lot of these artists did come back to Australia and coming back, it, it, I suppose it started to open up doors that we didn't have to think or do the same things and it started leading us into um, a contemporary um, era. And I must say that John and Sunday, although they were champions of, the, of modernism and spearheaded it in Melbourne, they also always um, supported contemporary art of their time. So their adopted son, Sweeney Reid, who was the son of Joy Hester and Albert Tucker, he had his own gallery and was an artist. And he, with the support of the Reeds, um, there was a new generation of artists that came through, like Les Cosettes. Um, and then um, we have Merca Mora. Um, so there were a lot of artists that were coming through uh, that, you know, Sydney Ball, who was quite abstract. So things were always changing and they were always at the forefront of that change. Um, I think the building we're sitting in now, Heidi 2, is a prime example of a modernist building which was extremely hard to build, but it was, you know, there was a vision that John and Sunday had where, um, where if you see photographs of the original building, it's very stark white clean lines, but the brief that she gave McGlashan and Everest was that she wanted it to be a gallery to be lived in and she also wanted it to look like a ruin in the landscape. So when you're here at Heidi now and you go and step back and you look at the building, it really does meld into the landscape now, but it also houses um, works from our collection from this period all the way through. Um, which you know looks at modernity and post-modernity from our collection and allows us to still evaluate and um, give critical acclaim to artists and people and genres that haven't necessarily been given the uh, the recognition that they deserve. So, in regards to post-modernism, how has this affected education in Australia, and how do you more so? How do you think this affects us in public programs? Okay. Well, postmodernism has um, allowed us, especially in an education setting, which public programs is really um, an extension of, to be able to borrow or reevaluate for educational purposes. So, for instance, we're able to use an artist's work um, and then be able to juxtapose it or use it in a new media. So for public programs, um, it has been a wonderful sort of opportunity. So there's no direct copying as such, but we will use an exhibition um, or a painting, a sculpture, a building, an artist's work. So it might be an artist, um, um, for instance, it might have been Sidney Nolan or maybe even a contemporary artist, um, and use their work as a sounding board to actually explore ideas and um, with children and adults and also people living with um, disabilities and mental health. So with um, Michelle, we've um, started developing a, a range of um, programs that use multimedia. So um, using digital 
digital and analog, I must say. Like, the, there is one important thing I think one must remember is that nothing is ever static. People use ideas from the past and, you know, you use ideas from the present. Uh, drawing your idea down and then putting it into a multimedia aspect is just as um, important.